well, what do we have here? Twitter is so liberal that its conservative employees don't feel safe to express their opinions, admits the CEO Jack Dorsey. Well, but CNN says that it's a false claim that big tech is silencing conservatives. While the liberal mainstream media will never report on his admission, he did say this to Recode Media during an interview on their podcast. And Recode's a pretty popular organization. They're the ones who hosted that historic interview with Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. They always have the red chairs. So it wasn't a small podcast. But I'm sure little Brian Stelter and Oliver Darcy know what's happening inside of Twitter better than the CEO. And you may recall that it was just a few weeks ago that dozens of conservative Facebook employees finally united and began speaking out on their internal messaging system about how intolerant the liberal culture is within Facebook. And let's not forget that just last week, we got an entire hour-long leaked video from a Google staff meeting with all their top executives, some of them literally in tears, just days after the 2016 election, as they spent the entire meeting talking about what they were gonna do. And it was just yesterday that we learned that Google employees discussed tweaking the search results in order to counter President Trump's travel ban. Google employees brainstormed ways to alter search functions to counter the Trump administration's controversial 2017 travel ban, the Wall Street Journal reported on Thursday, citing internal emails. The Google employees proposed ways to leverage search functions and take steps to counter what they consider to be Islamophobic, algorithmically biased results for search terms like Islam, Muslim, Iran, blah, 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 Mexico, Hispanic, etc., etc. And the Data and Society Research Institute just released a 60-page report on conservative YouTubers who they have dubbed the Alternative Influence Network that they say are adopting techniques of brand influencers to build audiences and, quote, sell them political ideologies. And of course, this Alternative Influencer Network is breeding right-wing radicalism. Their report includes this chart. And I'm serious, this is really the chart in their report showing all the different connections between a bunch of different YouTubers who have all collaborated with each other or done interviews with each other. The graph is a partial representation of collaborative connections within the Alternative Influence Network, the AIN as they call it, a network of controversial academics, media pundits, and internet personalities who use YouTube to promote a range of political positions, from mainstream versions of libertarianism and conservatism to overt white nationalism. While collaborations can sometimes consist of debates and disagreements, they more frequently indicate social ties, endorsements, and advertisements for other influencers. Surprisingly, I'm not even in this mess, even though I have more subscribers and more daily viewers than pretty much all of these people. Probably because liberals don't have a sense of humor, so they don't really get me. Maybe I should start doing interviews with other YouTubers. And with my book coming out a week after the midterms, that might be a good time to start. Seriously, I'm really disappointed that this research institute doesn't think that I'm important enough to be a YouTube influencer. And the whole point of their research project is that these YouTubers are responsible for radicalizing people. First you watch Joe Rogan, then you hop over to Jordan Peterson, and then you go right over into white nationalist land. Of course, they weren't going to be satisfied with just removing Alex Jones from YouTube. They're coming for all conservatives. This is from Variety. How YouTube's far right is using classic influencer tactics to promote its views. Political extremists are using YouTube to monetize their toxic ideas. Conservatism is toxic now. The Alternative Influence Network report also recommends that YouTube ban channels from even interviewing certain people, saying, quote, the platform should not only assess what channels say in their content, but also who they host and what their guests say. In a media environment consisting of networked influencers, YouTube must respond with policies that account for influence and amplification. Oh, we're sorry, only mainstream media channels can interview controversial people, not regular YouTubers. It's getting pretty crazy, guys, and it's only gonna get worse as the midterms approach, and then as the 2020 election approaches, 
they're going to be doing everything that they can to try to shut us down. At this rate, I wonder if they're going to ban my new book, which is hopefully coming out a week after the midterms. I'll give you guys an update as the release date gets a little bit closer. So thanks to everyone who supports this channel. All you guys who sponsor me through Patreon and tip me through PayPal. Couldn't do this without you. If you guys enjoy these videos and want to support the channel, go to markdice.com and check out my awesome shirts. Just released this new JFK Trump shirt. I'll search for the cool stuff over there. Coffee mugs available too with all those designs. And you can get any one of them in a t-shirt, long sleeve hoodie. Pretty much a variety of different colors as well. So thanks again for all your support. Click the link in the description below. Take it to the store. Have a great weekend, guys. Check back on Monday for a new report. And hopefully, I will see you soon.